maybe just allow your shoulders to kind of roll down and release that tension that you might be holding in your jaw or in your neck or in your shoulders or in your back. Just feel yourself firmly supported by the chair beneath you. And take a few moments to focus on your breath. The breath is the simplest, easy way to allow yourself to feel that presence, to connect with that divine presence within. With each breath, it is the breath of life. It is the breath of love. It is the breath of wisdom. It is the breath of beingness. And I'll share with you just a affirmative message this morning to lead you into meditation, after which you'll have a few moments to sit quietly. At any time, you can return to your breath. If you find that you've gotten distracted or your mind's wandered away, there's no judgment, no fear, just returning to the breath, returning back to that divine presence. I have come here to be unique. At times it may seem as if you are not enough as you are, or that it would somehow be better if you were different. The persistent illusion that we must be something other than our unique self-expression in order to be accepted and acceptable can unsettle us. Breathe deeply and know that you are a glorious, complex collection of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects that have come to life as you. You are a precious work of divine art. Embrace and admire your uniqueness and share it abundantly with the world. I release all pressure to be anything other than my unique self. I am a precious work of divine art here to bless the world in my own special way. yourself a few more moments here. There's nowhere you have to go, nowhere you have to be, but this present moment. Breathing in, breathe in peace. Breathing out, breathe out love. Breathing in, breathe in acceptance. Breathing out, breathe out the breath of life. You are always supported by this inner presence, this inner knowing. You can return to this moment at any time simply by coming back to the breath.
ever so gently, I invite you to bring your awareness back to your body temple this morning. Allow yourself to feel the sensations of fingers and toes, to feel yourself supported by the chair beneath you. You may decide that you want to gently wiggle your fingers and toes, maybe roll your shoulders, stretch your neck, as you bring your awareness back to this time and space. And when you're ready, you may open your eyes. How was that this morning for some connection? I've been working on that a lot. The last few years for me, I know it's been a change for all of us since the hurricane and COVID and everything else, but the last few years for me have been about seeking my authenticity and discovering more about who I am. Now, while the past two decades, I have always felt authentic in my spiritual journey. I've always felt where I, where I was was where I needed to be. I realized that my human experience, that of day-to-day -day life and work and et cetera, et cetera, has been much more influenced by spoken and sometimes unspoken expectations of others. Sometimes these expectations are real and sometimes they're imagined. So I've started letting go of my getting approval from others bit by bit, moment by moment. This is certainly a journey and I've started down a pathway towards living a more authentic life in all areas of my life, spiritually, mentally, and physically. Now through this process over the last couple of years, I've also discovered more about how my brain works and how I process the world. After a lifetime of feeling different, of having sensory issues, of having overwhelmed sometimes, and of feeling like I just don't fit in and I don't connect, I sought out answers. The answer came in the form of something I knew was already true, that I was a unique expression. But it also came in the form of a diagnosis, autism spectrum disorder. There's a name for what I was feeling. But I wanna be clear here, I can't speak to everybody who is on the spectrum and I can't speak for them. But for me, I don't view it as a disorder so much as I view it a part of, as a part of me. It's a part of how my brain works. It's a part of who I am. It's my natural order. It's how my brain processes the world and we all process things differently. There is a wide range that makes up the human brain and no two of us are gonna be exactly alike. So while some have viewed this diagnosis as a hindrance, thinking it's going to inhibit me in some way rather than help, or some have even asked, well, why would you seek a diagnosis if you seemingly were managing so successfully before? Well, they didn't know the inner struggles that I experienced. They didn't know the sensory overwhelm that I was experiencing. And so I can't help but be like, okay, yeah, they don't get it. Well, I didn't get it either for so many years. I didn't get why I felt different, why I felt alien. But having a label isn't so I can be labeled it's so that I ha now have a pathway to understand what is the authentic me? What do I really look like? So for me, it's about uncovering the authentic me. It's the authentic me that wants to embrace my uniqueness, my creativity, my wholeness, and yes, the fascinating and sometimes frustrating way that I process the world. So this pathway has led me down to becoming more authentic to my sensory needs, to my spatial needs, to the way I just simply operate in the world. But my natural way of operating in the world 
wasn't always given space or approval by those who operated differently. Once I started learning more about myself, I realized there are things that were helpful to me as a child that I stopped doing because they were taught out of me. I was taught to cover them up and mask them. Recent years, advocacy has grown in this area so that more people and more spaces are friendly to the neurodivergent experience. So my newfound understanding has made me somewhat of an advocate. I want to empower others to seek out their own authenticity, whatever that looks like for them, spiritually, mentally, physically. And it's my hope that I can help others by giving them space, by giving them respect, by giving them and uh, just listening to them in a place where they don't have to feel fear, where they don't have to feel judgment, so that they can go about their life in the way that they naturally operate in the world. So I don't see this diagnosis as a disorder. I view it as understanding simply how my brain processes things different from what seems to be the mainstream, even though we know we're all unique expressions of the divine. So I tend to use the title, and it's more affirming and uplifting, Autism Spectrum Brain Style. Now, I can no more separate the way my brain processes things and my understanding of the world from, from how I am actually processing than I can separate my human experience from the very senses that my body uses to see, you know, to interact with the world, to see, to hear, to touch, to taste, to smell. These things are connected. Now, I know that being autistic and that autism isn't all that I am, yet all of my experience is through the lens of this perfectly imperfect autistic brain. Just as for each one of you, your experience is through the lens of your perfectly imperfect brain style, whatever that is. Now, for years, I wore masks. I wore masks to cover up, you know, kind of stems, things that I would do, um, you know, vocalizations, other things. And I did this to placate to the expectations of society, to the expe expectations of others spoken or unspoken, to try to earn the approval of others, I would try to make eye contact, even though it made me feel uncomfortable. I wanted to feel some semblance of connection. I wanted to feel as if I was in relationship with others. I didn't want to feel different. So sure, I tended to do the things that I saw others doing that made me, I thought, look good, good grades, doing things that I know others wanted, being the first to raise my hand, being the first to help out. <coughs> Yet this need to live up to the expectations of others led to stress, led to anxiety, and ultimately about two years ago led to a period of burnout. Now, it took me going through a period of burnout to search for my authentic self, and it took this understanding more about my authentic self for me to discover how I can best manage for me and how I can set healthy boundaries that will at least hopefully delay future periods of burnout. There is some research and some anecdotal evidence that people on the autism spectrum disorder experience burnout at a little higher rate than others. Now, I could have just easily as titled this talk, Searching for Authenticity, Embracing Yourself as a Unique Whole Expression of the Divine, or even Letting Go of People Pleasing. All these titles would have embraced this idea, this larger idea 
of not seeking the approval of others, of releasing that and being authentic to yourself. This process hasn't been easy for me, and I'm sure if you've started searching out your authenticity, it probably hasn't been easy for you either. Because it's about giving up something, giving up our erroneous beliefs about how we view the world, giving up our erroneous beliefs about how we view ourselves and our own self-worth. It's about giving up our beliefs our erroneous beliefs that others make that decision for us, that we're worthy. It's about giving up these beliefs that place our worth in the hands and minds of others and that give them our power. That can be hard for some of us to do, including myself. What it is, though, ultimately, is replacing those erroneous beliefs with ones of truth, ones of wholeness, ones of worthiness, ones that allow us to reclaim our power and see ourselves as unique expressions of the divine. Now, we all people please to some extent. This isn't unique for me. We all do it. I still do it. We all seek out the approval of others from time to time, even if we think we don't. We all possess a deep-seated fear of rejection. You may not want to hear that. That's where it comes from. This need to get approval from others is this deep-seated fear of rejection. We want to seek out acceptance and connection, yet we feel somehow inherently that we're unworthy to do so and that other people have to make that choice for us and tell us we're worthy. And guess what? This is part of our perfectly imperfect human experience. It's this fear of rejection that pushes us, pushes us to try to seek out what possibly and more than likely isn't yours to do or isn't yours to get from somebody else. It's yours to make for yourself. So it pushes us to try to strive for expectations that are here when maybe where we need to be is just here and that's okay. And it's this fear that we live from that hinders us from living authentically to our needs and our own boundaries. So I'm certainly not going to get up here on a soapbox and tell you that there are not going to be times when you might need or even desire the approval of others. I can think of a few, including like job interviews, you know, meeting somebody for the first time, you want to make a good impression. Nor am I going to get up here and tell you to relinquish every people-pleasing thought that you might have, because I think it's an impossible task. I'm not even going to try. And, but there's a balance. There's a balance that can be struck between meeting the needs of others and meeting the needs of yourself. From a place of empathy, from a place of compassion, from a place of wanting to treat others with compassion and love and respect, there are times where we're going to be led, where we're going to want, and we're going to need to be selfless and put others before ourselves. Yet as I'm learning, setting healthy boundaries and living a more authentic life is not selfish. There can be a healthy balance between oneself and one's needs and helping others. But this balance is going to look different for each and every one of you, and it's going to look different moment to moment, day to day. There might be days where you need to recharge and you need to say no, and there might be days where you just get up and you feel the sunshine and you feel the life and you feel you can take on the world, and you say yes. Each day is going to be different. 
I will tell you that science confirms that there is a risk between people pleasing, especially those who overly people please, and burnout. Debbie Sorensen, a Harvard trained clinical psychologist, has found links between people pleasing and burnout, as well as increased feelings of guilt and resentment. Feelings of guilt. Whenever you were like, hey, I want to say no, and I don't want to let you down. Yet feelings of resentment, if you say yes, and you're like, eh, that's really not mine to do. And I felt both. So I'd like to briefly share with you just some of the techniques that I have been using the last two years to live a more authentic life, to start letting go of this fear, this need to get everything done by, you know, a certain time or a certain deadline or by somebody's expectations. And yeah, guess what? It's a, it's a pass or fail grade. That means I don't have to get 100 on everything and turn in everything, you know? Sometimes it's okay. I was taught it was never okay to be below 100%, but that's not true. It's okay to live where you're comfortable at living in that moment. If only I had learned that earlier in my school year age, that would, be, that would have been nice to know. So what, am I do what have I been doing? It started for me with an awareness, an awareness that for me, perfectionism was a double-edged sword. It both helped me in some ways and hindered me in a lot of ways. And so becoming aware of how we seek out the approval of others, how we evaluate our worth based on the approval of others, how we allow fear rather than our higher consciousness to light our way, that's the first step. It's just becoming aware that it's happening. I've also learned more about the ways that I've been shooting myself. And for those who haven't heard this word before, it, I'm not saying a cuss word, <laughs> should. How are you shooting yourself? I should do this, I should do that, I should do X, Y, Z. And what would happen is I would experience guilt for saying no to something that I honestly didn't want to do, but I felt I had to do, that was expected of me. And then I would experience resentment if I said yes to something that at that time, maybe I didn't feel like I had the energy to do or it wasn't mine to do. I wanted to place my energy in other areas of my life. So I'm slowly learning that I can't be all things to all people, nor do I need to be. So if you need to hear this for yourself this morning, you can't be all things for all people, nor do you need to be. I only need to be authentic to my own pathway, to the wholeness of who I am and my experience. I answer to myself in that inner divine presence, no one else. So I'm learning day by day that it's not selfish to say no, and it's not selfish to put on my oxygen mask before I help others. And sometimes, yes, if I need a recharge, that means taking a few breaths and maybe a break before I put on your oxygen mask. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just not mine to do all the time. And when I find that I'm shooting myself, I start to ask, am I doing this for the approval of others? Am I doing this because there's some sort of fear or some sort of, I think, expectation that I feel I need to meet? Am I doing this because I'm evaluating my worth based on this thing that I'm being asked to do? Or am I being led by higher consciousness to do what I'm being feel led to do? And so prayer and meditation are essential in this way because it helps clarify what is yours to do, what is your pathway forward. It opens windows, it opens doors to clarity, to know this is mine, this is my mission, this is what I'm here to do, 
And that over there, not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> so I'm learning to set healthy boundaries and communicate my needs to others. If it's really difficult if you have hidden or unspoken expectations. So if I'm getting frustrated because it's noisy where I'm working at and I have not expressed my desire to have a workspace that is quiet, part of that's on me. So I'm setting healthy boundaries. I'm communicating and clarifying my expectations and I hope that others are clarifying their expectations with me and I'm asking more questions. Hey, what is your expectation of this? Instead of trying to go up here or shoot for the moon, maybe I just need to reach orbit around the earth, right? So I'm also learning to set aside feelings of guilt or selfishness. And I'm learning to take me time. So I've started taking Mondays off. I tend to work Wednesday through Sunday. Sundays are still sometimes a work day for me as I'm doing right now. And so I'm taking Mondays off. It's a time to take some down space, some, some breathing room, time to recharge. And I'm learning to let the divine presence within lead the way more. Not fight, not resist, not allow myself to get caught up in human stuff that is not mine to have or hold or do. And so that means living authentically from that clarity that I am receiving, that vision of who I am that I am receiving in prayer and meditation. Now, there are still things that I don't want to do. There are still times I feel guilty if I haven't cleaned the house and somebody comes over. There are still some times where I'll spend an entire day cleaning the house if I think you're going to come over because I feel like that's an expectation. I haven't gone away from everything yet. Life has to continue on. Chores have to be done. Bills have to be paid. You know, I do want clean laundry next week. Um, assignments are due, appointments have to be met, etc., cetera, et cetera. But I have a newfound awareness of how my needs are now being met, what I need to do to make sure my needs are met. And I'm living from a place that is authentic to my sense of beingness. I'm learning to accept myself as a unique individual expression of the divine that is whole and worthy just as I am. And I hope that you will be inspired to live more authentically too. You are beautiful, diverse, and unique expressions of the divine, and you deserve to live authentically to you and as you. Namaste.